Hey everyone, my name is Quinn Cusledge, and I'm a professional VR developer and technical artist. And today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on baking by mesh name. Now this is the process to increase the quality of textures created in Substance Painter for Unreal, Unity, or really any other 3D software where you need textures to look good on a 3D asset, and you're creating those textures yourself. Now in the past, I've made a similar texturing tutorial to this where I used a method called the explosion method where I actually took all the pieces of the mesh and blew them apart and then baked them and then took them back into Maya and recombined them after I was finished doing the textures. And honestly, that is not a very efficient workflow for creating textures. And a lot of people commented on that video and let me know that I should be baking by mesh name. So after doing more research, I started using that and two years later, I am now making a tutorial on it. So thank you everyone for telling me that that existed. I can't believe I didn't know about it. Uh, I guess uh, that was just an oversight. In order to have an asset to use to showcase the technique in this tutorial, I created this PS3 controller asset. Um, and it was something I did for a render that I was working on inside of Unreal to test out 5.6 lighting and rendering features, but it's also something that I want to use to do a texturing tutorial for beginners inside of Substance Painter. So that'll be coming out at some point in the near future. But I wanted to cover this first as it was kind of simple and easy, and right now my face is still half paralyzed, so it's just kind of what I have the bandwidth for. To start, I want to explain what the baking by mesh name process actually improves when it comes to baking your assets. This is a mesh that was baked without mesh name. So a few issues that you're going to see is anywhere where there's like stuff that's like overlapping or close together, like in the charger port here, you can actually see that like the internal metal piece of this charger port baked onto the inner plastic of the controller itself, right? And you know, well here, it's not like super awful it's definitely not ideal especially if you know i'm gonna have a camera that's really close to this or something like that and then also here you can see there's a weird baking issue here as well and then if we go you know onto these buttons we're also seeing some issues here in the recesses where these ports sit or in these buttons sit and then also on the joystick too we can see that there's some overlapping of the baking right here as well and that's just not what we're looking for when it comes to making high quality assets. We want them to look nice. We don't want them to have any of these weird baking issues. This is the same mesh, but it's been baked by mesh name. So when we look at the buttons here, we can see that there's no longer any like clipping or weird baking and that all of these objects are properly baked with the high poly. If we go over to the charge report here, um, we can see that we no longer have pieces baked on top of themselves right here. These are all separate meshes and they've been labeled properly so that they will be baked individually to the high poly from the low poly. And it kind of gets rid of all those weird baking issues that just make your asset look bad. And so that's kind of what I wanted to cover in this tutorial, how to do that and the easiest and fastest way to do so. So now that we see the difference between an asset that was baked with and without the baking by mesh name process in Substance Painter, we can get to work actually doing it ourselves. So here I have a controller scene in Maya. I have the low poly controller and I have my high poly controller. And the goal is to bake the high poly onto the low so that we can use the detail I've added to this high poly, like this like crease line here to show the you know plastic coming apart. Um, uh, different details on the actual controller uh, that are not on the low poly. Uh, stuff that I did not want to model in topology wise, uh, but I want to be on the normal map to make the controller look as realistic as possible. Now I have these assets separated and grouped. So basically I took every piece of, a, of this model um, and I separated it into its own labeled item, right? So we've got like the uh, D-pad buttons separated. We've got the joysticks on their own object and they're all grouped together underneath this main descriptor, which is PS3 controller low. And this is what I will be exporting out to Substance Painter for baking. Basically, I wanna go through the process of prepping this asset for Substance Painter. So basically I have the PS3 controller high and the PS3 controller low right here. And then inside are all of these uh, different buttons and each object is exactly the same and they're also in the same position as you can see here they're right on top of each other that's important for baking but when it comes to actually how to set up this object for baking by mesh name we need to add the same suffix that we see on this like group label to each of the individual assets now in the past the way that i would go about doing this is i would literally select each object and then add a suffix low right and then i would do the same thing for the high poly but that got annoying uh, and tedious, so I wrote a Python script for it, which you can find for free on my Gumroad page. Basically, you just launch it, 
you're gonna select the assets that you would like to add a suffix to. Um, and then you just write in your suffix right here and then you click add suffix. What it'll do is it'll give you a like kind of update that says like, hey, I've added this. And now on the left-hand side here in the outliner, you can see that every single one of these assets now has, or sorry, objects has the low suffix added. And we can do the same for the high. I've also added something that removes it. So basically if you want to do more work or add more assets um, and you don't want to worry about the suffixes getting in your way when you're naming the items in your outliner, you can also remove them too. So I'm going to go down to the high poly now. I'm going to select all the objects inside the high poly and I'm going to change the suffix so that it's high. And this can be high spelled out or just HI. It's kind of up to you. You just need to make sure that they match what you're doing in Substance Painter as well. So I'm going to add suffix again. That adds all of the things I need for my suffix to work. And now I can export these assets into Substance Painter. To do that, I'm going to grab the entire group and I'm going to press File, Export Selection. Um, the settings that I use in order to make this work well is I use smoothing groups, tangents and binormals, and uh, reference assets content. I do not triangulate because uh, Unreal Engine will do that for me. And then uh, the version that I like to export FBX wise is FBX 2014-2015. Uh, I don't actually think this matters, but I remember when I was a freshman in college, my professor said only to use this one and I have done that forever and it has never led me wrong. So that's what I will do. Anyway, I'm gonna create a new folder inside of my export and I'm gonna call this tutorial because this is where the tutorial assets are. And I'm going to take this and I'm gonna call this one PS3 controller low. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my high poly. Make sure that if you have them visible and invisible, you actually toggle them visible inside of the uh, channel box editor. Otherwise they will not export any ad set. Uh, and we're gonna export the same settings as before. We're gonna grab this just to fill it out for us. And then we change this low suffix to a high suffix. And then we export selection again. Now we can open up Substance Painter and bake. All right, now that we're inside of Substance Painter, we wanna import our low poly first. So we're gonna go up to the upper left corner here. We're gonna press File, New. And inside of here, it's gonna give us some options. So uh, this asset is going into Unreal for my render. So what I'm going to do is click Unreal Engine Starter Assets for my import template, but there's a bunch of other options here. And if you didn't wanna use the Unreal Export, you could also do like PBR, Metallic Roughness and stuff like that, because that's the uh, process that Unreal uses for uh, managing its shaders. But I just use the Unreal Engine Starter Assets. The document resolution is 2048. Um, I'm actually going to bake it at 4K, but I can change that later and I'm going to go to the tutorial assets that I exported. I'm gonna start with my low poly. I'm gonna bring that in. This object does use UDIMs, so I'm gonna click the use UV tile workflow. Um, I'm gonna uncheck auto unwrap because I use my own UVs and I don't want substance to make UVs for me. Uh, and then I press okay. And that's gonna bring my controller into the scene. Uh, another thing I like to do whenever I start a new Substance Painter scene is open the uh, rendering settings and change my background so that it looks nicer and also uh, works better with like the actual texturing workflow and i'm going to cover this in my beginner tutorial but i'll cover it again right now basically i change the map or i go up to the upper right corner here where this little like display settings are i go here and i change the environment map from panorama to studio 5 because it looks nice i up the environment opacity so i can see the background and then i up the blur and then I also change the environment rotation from world to camera. That way it actually follows my camera as I pan around the object. So I adjust it so that the light's kind of always hitting the object as I pan around. And now it just looks significantly nicer and I'll be able to see all of the texture work I'm doing in much more detail and not have to work with an environment that looks you know, just kind of bad. Also, if I press F2, sorry, F1, I can see the UV maps. If I press and I, I drag this over, I can see both at the same time. If I press F3, I can see just the UV maps and if I press F2 again, I can just see the object by itself. So now I want to actually bake my texture maps and I need to get the high poly into the project for that. So to bake, I'm gonna to go to the upper right here where I see the camera. This is where you go to render, but I'm actually looking at this little croissant icon so I can bake. It's kind of fun that the bake icon is a croissant icon. I do like that. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my output size from 2048 to uh, 4K because I just want it to be 4K. Uh, I like to bake higher because then I can down res it later if I want to. I'm going to go down to where my 
high poly parameters are and it says high definition meshes, I'm gonna click this little new icon and I'm going to load in my high poly mesh. And as you can see, this is over the top. And honestly, if you were like, you know, not using this process, you could just bake from here, but we're using baking by mesh name. So we actually have to set some things in here so we can see them. So as you can see, if I go down to this baking log in this lower right tab, it says matching by name. If I change this match from always to by mesh name, you can see um, the high and the low poly listed left and right. And then you can see all of our objects that we labeled in our Maya scene. So basically it's the same thing. It lines up perfectly with how it's supposed to. And if there's any errors with your naming process, you're going to see them in here. These items will be red and they won't match. So you have to go back into your 3D modeling software and change them. You can also do this process with Blender as well. I just don't use it that often and I don't have a tool written for it. I can obviously do that if it's wanted. Next thing I'm going to do in this main settings page is I'm just going to go down to here where it says anti-aliasing. I'm going to turn the super sampling up to 64x and then I'm going to actually set it for each map that I'm baking. So the first place I'm going to go is disable ID because I don't care about that. And I'm going to go to ambient occlusion. I'm going to change the distribution from cosine to uniform. I'm going to change ignore back face to by mesh name and self occlusion to only same mesh name. And then I'm going to go to curvature and I'm going to change the always to only same mesh name. And then I'm going to go down to uh, thickness and I'm going to change distribution to uniform and only by mesh name. Now I'm ready to bake. So I'm going to go through the baking process and go down to where it says bake selected textures and I'm going to bake. Now, since I'm baking this texture at 4k, it's going to take a lot longer than it normally does. If you're following along with your own asset, feel free to bake it at 2k. You do not need to follow my settings exactly, but your bake's going to look the best if you do follow the uh, matte mesh bakers that I set just now. Now that that's finished, um, we can go to return to painting mode and see our object as it's properly baked textures. So now we can see we've got the detail from the high poly baked onto the low. And since we baked by mesh name, we don't have any of that weird overlapping I showcased at the beginning. And that is the entire process for baking objects by mesh name. Uh, it's really awesome. <laughs> and uh, I can't believe that I didn't use it all through college and just dealt with terrible baking issues. Uh, really should have done that more, but that is the entire tutorial. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please leave a like on the video and perhaps consider subscribing. I have a bunch of awesome VR tutorials and I'm actively working on more. Um, my face is still currently paralyzed from Bell's palsy and that's why there was no face cam in this video. I do apologize as I like to talk directly to you and uh, could not do that because my face is not working. Thank you again for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.